everybody, it's me, Stormy, and here's your 2018 yearly horoscope. All right, Gems, before we jump into this horoscope breakdown with dates at the end, so no worries, um, I want to let you know that the 2018 birthday appointment gifts are up, so you just click in the description box down below. There's lots of changes coming this year to Stormy Grace, but I wanted to make sure I definitely got you your birthday appointments in there. So click in the description box, grab your spot before they are gone, and yes, we're booking for the whole year out, and you book by your sun sign. All right, Gemini, we've got some continuing energy as we move into 2018. Saturn moved into Capricorn in December of 2017. We're going to have this energy in Capricorn for approximately three years. And for you, it's in the eighth house. Now, Saturn transiting the eighth house is all about you learning in terms of finances and joint resources how to do for you, right? Like you can be the most independent Gemini, but you're going to start to see where you have some weird connections, or maybe even you've had resources or support in some ways. And this, I think, includes intimate support as well, right? Like somebody emotionally being there supporting you. And now it's not there. Maybe these resources dry up or they flat out go away. Maybe you've had people leave your life and now you don't have that support structure. And you're finding out about your strength and your movement on your own, because this is all happening for you in that eighth house space. So doing this too, one of the things that you may be able to identify is just finances as a whole get tight. And this could be because now your debts, you're having to really pay attention to your debts. They are coming up and it's like, hey, you know, time to pay the piper on these things. And the next couple years, you're going to deal with and look over these things. Now, one of the things I think is is a possibility on how these things could present themselves as well, is you have to think very broad about this as well, is that maybe you move from having a roommate and now you're moving, you're living on your own, or maybe you were living on your own and now you have a brand new roommate or something like that. Um, if you are in some kind of partnership, maybe your partner goes through a hard time or something and you end up supporting them and you. That could be something that happens. But if you are working with the Saturn energy, by the end of this transit, I want to just promise you, you are so gangster. You so are empowered. You have this in an understanding that you cannot believe and you can really, really do for you. And I promise you, I'm finish, finishing an eighth house Saturn transit. And man, the way my life and finances look and my intimacy with other people, it, there's a depth here that I've never experienced before. And so I know that that's what's coming for you as well. But either way, all things connected to joint resources, which include taxes, inheritance, um, financial aid, um, any of those things are going to come under examination right now and restructuring so that you have appropriate, successful spiritual financial health. And that's a beautiful thing. I will tell you too, any place that Saturn's transiting, if you need help, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Allow somebody who knows what they're doing to go on ahead and guide you. That's like the best, that's like the best tool you've got in your back pocket, okay? Now, all of this do for you is can feel a little heavy. Saturn energy can feel a little bit heavy, but we've got Jupiter and Scorpio, some more carryover energy from 2017. You'll have Jupiter and Scorpio in your sixth house all the way until November 8th of 2018. And this is amazing. Jupiter's bringing along these opportunities for expansion, opportunity, growth, wisdom. You're bringing self-confidence to the table, which makes these opportunities even more delicious. And for for you, these things are all around work, job, job skills, co-workers, health, daily routines. So it's work and health is basically what you're working with. Now, these energies, what does this look like? Jupiter likes to, first of all, Jupiter wants us to expand, right? But he doesn't want us to just expand our thinking. He wants us to expand. He's like, get out, go out into the world. I'm trying to bring you opportunities. Go out and take them. So if you've been looking for a new job, wonderful energy for you to achieve that this year. If you do anything freelance, wonderful energy for you to take on a new position. If you need to hire or fire employees, you'll have the wisdom to know which way that needs to look. Now, one of the other things that I'm looking at and thinking about is that Jupiter makes some um, really nice connections with both Neptune and Pluto a few times this year. And I think that some of those things really help you. With a Neptune-Jupiter um, 
trine, which is what that energy will be, and we'll experience that on both May 25th and August 19th. This could be a time where literally a new career comes into your pathway or something within your same career line. There's just like a door that opens and your intuition, your faith, you may even be a little bit afraid, but you take it on anyways. I also feel like this is a year where you have just really shown through your building of relationships in 2017, um, you have shown that you can really hold your own in the work and career space and you may have people that are team gemini and you didn't even know that they were team gemini but they are on your team helping to make your new vision of your career move forward it's a really delicious energy so i will tell you that i think you have to be a little bit mindful in january April and September and that's when Jupiter is actually going to be coming and working with some energies of Pluto and that's between your sixth house and your eighth house. Why I say I think you have to be careful is that this is an energy where you're bringing the wisdom of change to the table. You have to watch this is really an intimate space where you've got to bring your talents to the table and you have to not back down. If this is that time where you're going for a promotion and they say, or you're asking for a raise and they say, okay, tell us why. Don't shy yourself, Gemini, right? Like tell them, this is what I do, this is how I show up and this is how I can benefit you. Own it is basically what I'm saying. Now we've also got Uranus moving into the sign of Taurus this year. So May, May 15th, Uranus is going to move into the sign of Taurus. This is the 12th house space for you. So this is all things behind the scenes. This is a very private, um, hidden inner world. But what I think that this does for you is it gives you an opportunity to watch everything that's happened for you over this last year and get some new perspective around it. You may also... Um, feel a little bit rebellious here, but I think this is a wonderful healing energy with you here. You get out of a rut and it's like an emotional rut. It's like a fear rut. If you've been afraid of something, um, if you haven't been able to really connect at a deeper level with people, this is a wonderful energy here because this energy, especially with Uranus here tearing down old structures you've had, is really the spiritual awakening, spiritual experience, spiritual voila that kind of comes to you. This is the 12th house space. I will tell you too, if over the last year you've been holding on to something that you have guilt or shame or remorse or there's been a, a um, self-defeating set of actions you've been taking, this will be a time where you can start to clear those things out so that you can stop owning a story that's really not yours and really not serving you anymore. Now, like I said, on November 8th, Jupiter is actually going to leave this Scorpio energy here in the sixth house and move into Sagittarius where he's very, very comfortable. This is his ruling sign. So he's going to be expansive. It comes into your partnership sector. I love this portion of November for you in terms of relationships because it's all about relationships. You can have new business relationships, new relationships with whatever you call a higher power, new relationships with yourself. If you've been seeing somebody you guys could commit, you can even find yourself getting married by the end of this year or something more consciously chosen commitment-ish, <laughs> things like that. But whatever it is, the opportunities to grow in depth in relationships becomes abundant for you as we get ready to close out the year. Now, never to be forgotten, we also have Mars and Venus taking retrogrades this year, which is gonna be wonderful. It's a really nice chance to reevaluate, reconnect, reconsider some things. Mars is gonna take his retrograde June 26th to August 27th. This is actually happening in the sign of Aquarius. And so one of the things that I think of is any anything you have connected to male energies, father figures, um, just your perceptions of male or your interactions with males in general could be something that is definitely under review in terms of the actions you're taking, but also the courses that you're taking to move things forward, right? To make some different choices, have some different experiences. Do you need some training? Do you need some more education? Do you need to have more faith? Do you need to put yourself out there differently? All of those things become abundant to relook over um, when Mars is there. Now, one of the things I do recommend is that when Mars is retrograde, if you can avoid elective procedures, that means you chose to do them, right? Like you, you don't have to have it, you won't die without it. If you can avoid doing those while Mars is retrograde, I really highly recommend that because Mars is over things that are warlike and cutting in the surgeon's hands and cutting, that's very warlike. So if you don't need it and you can wait, I would just suggest that you wait. But if you can't, you do what you do. 
Now, Venus is also going to take a retrograde in October all the way until November 16th. Venus retrograde helps us relook at our relationships and also at our finances. Now, Venus is first going to start her retrograde in Scorpio in your sixth house and then back up into Libra in your fifth house. So if there's something you need to relook at in terms of children, you could have children coming into your life. Um, being childlike, creativity, joy, um, true love. If there's a romance in your life that could use a little bump up or a little fire or a little play, or if you need to have a conversation about maybe some things that have been swirling in your head you haven't really been sharing with anybody, this is a wonderful time to have those conversations while Venus is in that retrograde and we get ready to finish the year. So I want to get you out and enjoying 2018. So let me jump in and break this year. Yes, I said year. Oh my gosh. Down by date. January 31st, we're having a total lunar eclipse. And as you'll notice with the eclipse energies we have this year, they're very similar to 2017. They're Leo Aquarian energies. And these are connected to a cycle that started in 2016. So think back, Gemini. What were you working on? What were you manifesting? Where were you stuck? And what does that look like next to these energies today? Because these energies are going to help carry you forward. Now, a big thing we're going to be doing on this channel this year as well is talking about the different Difference between the total and the um, partial eclipses as well. So don't worry, I'll break those down. But this is a total lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Leo, which is going to be in your third house. Now that total gives us a completely different depth with what we're working on in terms of communication. You'll need to be communicating differently. This lunar eclipse tells us there's a significant ending to some kind of communication there could be a significant change with siblings or neighbors for you, things like that. Wherever you're um, trying to communicate, write, websites, all of these things could signal some big changes and adjustments that need to be made. February 15th, we have a solar eclipse, and this one is in Aquarius. This is up in that ninth house. Again, great time for expanded thinking, for new education, licenses, certifications, higher education, Faith, I teach ninth house is faith. This is where you just gotta take that leap and say, I don't know how this is gonna work out and you do it anyways. Um, foreign travel, doing things foreign to you, publishing that book, publishing broadcast, radio, podcast, any of them, they sit in there. So you're gonna have an opportunity for a really delicious start here, but look back 2016, what were you trying to get started? What'd you want, what'd your heart want then? And look at it as it's coming up to this February timeframe. May 15th, we see Uranus moving out of Aries into the sign of Taurus where we get a snack size flavor taste of what the long-term Uranus and Taurus is going to be like because Uranus is going to, in November, step back in a retrograde fashion back into Aries. And then in 2019, Uranus is going to stay in Taurus for a pretty significant amount of time. June 26th to August 27th, we've got that Mars retrograde happening in Aquarius. July 13th, we've got a partial solar eclipse, and this one's in Cancer. How cool is that? This is in your money. This is in your money. You've got a great opportunity, and Cancer is the home sign. So this could be a brand new way that you're making money or you find a passive income in some way, shape, or form, and it could very much so benefit your home. July 27th, we've got a total lunar eclipse. This one's in Aquarius. So again, re-looking at maybe completing something in this ninth house space. August, excuse me, October 5th through November 16th, we've got that Venus retrograde starting out in Scorpio right here in the sixth house, moving into Libra, moving backwards into Libra into that fifth house. So at this time, you're going to relook at relationships and finances. That's what Venus is about, but you're going to do it in terms of the sixth house placement, right? Like what's happening at work with your health? Where's your head mentally? right? Um, who's bringing value? Are people bringing value to the table um, in your work relationships life? Do you feel like what you're doing at work has value? In your fifth house space, what's happening with children? Do you have children coming into your world? Um, creative expression. Are you ready to launch something new, a new career, something, a new project or something like that? Do you need to make revisions to that? This is a wonderful energy to be looking at that and especially the financial aspects since financial health is really where you're at this year. Now, November 8th, as we get ready to end the year, we see Jupiter making that move very comfortably into the sign of Sagittarius. He's happy. He's at home. But we're going to get big. We're going to expand. These two are their home at last. So we're going to have expanded thinking, thinking very big, taking a lot of um, confident risks and growing in, in depth and creativity and truth around relationships and lots of opportunity to bring new relationships into your life that help you grow as well. And also to be the one coming in 
into someone's life to help them grow as well. Pretty significant and beautiful opportunities as we get ready to end the year. So I'm really excited. I look forward to walking through every week and every month with you. I'm sending you so many thank you for following me. You know, all of the time that you've been following me, if you're new, just first time watching this video, joining this channel, welcome. I look forward to seeing you all year long. Make sure you click in the description box, grab your birthday gift appointment, and I'll see you soon. Bye.